Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Manish, Mr. Jane, and you're watching Electric Avenue. This is episode number five. Uh, technically episode number six, since I started with zero, one, two, three, four, five as a typical programmer. But here we are, episode number five for the average person. And this is going to be our April 2023 roundup. So let's just kind of jump right into it. We're going to talk about four things. Uh, we're going to talk about the monthly registration numbers, like I always do. Uh, I've decided now to kind of combine the recent EV launches and the recent news into one. So we're going to just call it recent EV news and launches. Number three, we're going to talk about a deep dive. And this is not going to be a technical deep dive this month. We're going to talk more about the overall ecosystem and in particular one group, the Tata group, which I think has a lot of potential and I feel like they're not doing the best that they can. Number four is typical EV car spotting. I just saw the new BMW i7 and the thing looks amazing. Anyways, we'll take a look at it. We'll look at some pictures of the car and that's kind of what we've got for episode number five. So let's just drive right into it. And we are going to look at the EV numbers here. We've got it for the last three months. So we got February, March, April. And as always, Tata Motors is leading the pack at around 3,700 units. Then we've got M&M, that is also there, Mahindra Mahindra. And mainly that is because of their new, their new XUV 400. So that's the reason why they've got over 499 registered. When you, when you look at the past two months, they've not done much. So the XUV 400 is doing fantastic. And that's obviously because it's got a great price point and people are lapping it up. Then you've got MG Motors, uh, Renault. Renault, they've got their new uh, E3C. I can't even remember the name. It's so freaking tough to remember. But anyways, that's also doing well. The sales have picked up. Uh, I do know there's at least one uh, fleet aggregator for cabs that is using it in Bombay. And so that's probably part of the reason why the number got bumped up because they bought quite a few of them. And then you can see BYD, there's been a drop, kind of surprising. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of these Atto 3s on the road, but not sure. Again, there's always a difference between registrations and actual bookings and actual sales. There's multiple numbers. I'm going with the registrations because that's the easiest that you can get from the Vahan portal. Uh, BMW, they've got around 59, and that's probably all due to the IX. I see more and more of those IXs on the road than ever before. Then Hyundai, you've got 53. Volvo, Kia are both at 34. Mercedes-Benz at 27. Porsche, sadly, at only five. That means there are very few Porsche Taycans on the road. And then you've got Audi and Jaguar. I mean, I don't even really know why Jaguar shows up. You know, because they are just not doing much. And I really don't see too many of them on the road and for whatever reason. But anyways, that's the wrap up for the registration numbers uh, for April 2023. All right, next up is EV News. And like I said, I'm going to combine the launches and the EV News from now on. Uh, I can actually say there are really no launches this month or in April but we've got quite a bit on the EV news front. So the first article we're going to talk about is the Tata Tiago EV has achieved 10,000 unit sales, which is pretty amazing. 10,000 units. Now, that is not delivery, that is not registration. Those are, you know, probably people that have done bookings and it's probably a combination of bookings and sales. Uh, let's see, the numbers will kind of roll out, but the reason why it's doing really well is because the price point of this vehicle is fairly low. And so they're getting a lot. This is the Tata Tiago, which is the third in the Tata portfolio. The first of course is the Nexon EV. Then it was the Tagore, which is a sedan. And then the Tiago, it's their hatchback. So they're doing pretty well, as you can see from their sales, less than four months. And they've booked uh, 10,000 sales of the car. Now, this is something I didn't think I'd be talking about much in this podcast, and that is uh, VC funding. Uh, but I thought, you know, actually, it does make sense uh, to talk about anyone that is kind of funding in the EV space. And here you've got Blue Smart that has raised uh, $42 million, which is a decent amount. Uh, but I guess what people are saying is they were talking about raising over a quarter of a billion dollars. 
So that would have been around 250 million and they only took in 42 now. Who knows exactly what the real numbers are or what the real fundraiser is going to be. But 42 is still a lot and Blue Smart is really going to be the aggregator for only electric. So when you think about Uber or Ola, these guys are only going to be focusing on you know, electric cars or maybe even hydrogen, probably anything that is, you know, eco-friendly. And they, you know, they've done a pretty good job with the fundraise. And I think they're going to start expanding into cities like uh, Bombay is my guess. So that's the first article. Uh, then this just kind of talks about another one of the co-founders, Puneeth, who talks about, uh, you know, they're trying to build out a, uh, a full stack. I love when people use full stack for anything, but they're going to use a full stack, which basically means end to end. Uh, you know, fully integrated all electric EV ride sharing, ride uh, hailing service. So, you know, from front to back, they're going to own the app infrastructure. They're going to own the cloud infrastructure. They're going to own probably the charging stations. They're going to own the cars, everything. They want to have a full consumer experience, you know, that, you know, they can own everything. So you, they, they, they don't go down the path of blaming someone if something goes wrong and they own, they own everything in the components of that. So that's kind of interesting. Let's see what happens with that. And then I've got another article. Where did it go? Uh, I think that's it actually. Yeah. So that's really it. That was, you know, those, those are the two articles. Um, as you can see, uh, the first co-founder, his name is Unmol Juggy. And then the second one uh, is, uh, you know, Puneeth Goyle. So these are the two co-founders of Blue Smart. And, you know, all the best to them. I really hope they get to Bombay very, very soon. I'd love to be able to just use them and who knows, maybe put my EV on their platform and, uh, you know, take people around. I'd love to do that, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Anyways, that's it for the EV news for April 2023. All right. So we are here in the deep dive. And as I mentioned this month, we're not going to get into technical details. We're not going to do skateboards. We're not going to do battery packs. Uh, this one is more around business dynamics and actually a market in India. And the one that I'm always amazed about is the Tata Group. So when people talk about Tesla, and the reason why people love Tesla is they always say it's the apple of the EV industry because Tesla kind of owns everything. But the truth of the matter is they don't. They don't own the battery packs. They don't manufacture the battery packs. They're starting to, but they didn't. They kind of, you know, brought all the pieces together and kind of branded them. But there is one company in India that could actually be the apple of EVs because they would own everything. And that is the Tata Group. Uh, so actually, uh, technically, it's called Tata Sons, and Tata Group is a group company of Tata Sons. But the thing is, everyone really calls them either Tata or Tata Group. So these are, you know, the, the main person that everybody talks about. This is really the uh, managing director of Tata Sons. Uh, this is N. Chandra Shekharan. He's the one that makes all the decisions. And that's really the main person everyone's saying is driving their initiative around EVs. And let's hope, you know, and... Uh, I really feel that, oh my God, am I going to say it? Yes, they could actually be a seamless full stack EV uh, operator because they own actually everything. And I'm going to dive into each piece that they actually own. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the automotive company and of course, ancillary parts. So you need a car company first. And luckily, Tata Motors has that. And they've got three cars, as I mentioned right now. They've got the SUV that they launched uh, in December 2019, which is an Exxon EV, which is the number one selling EV month over month over month. Then the second one they launched uh, was in October 2019, which is the sedan. So this actually launched a little bit before the Nexon, but this sedan was only for uh, fleet operators. And then they announced it for the general public, which was in August 2021. And, you know, the the Tigor EV is doing pretty well. Then the next one, which is the one they just recently launched, was the Tiago EV. And just as, this is their hatchback. So this was launched in 2022. And as we already talked about it, they've got a lot of booking, sales, whatever you want to call it. They've reached 10,000, which is the fastest, I think, ever for an EV in India. And so, you know, so they've got the cars. So you need that as a starting point. Uh, you know, Model T doesn't make any EVs, so they have no chance. They're going down a path that I got. I don't even know what they're doing, but that's a different story. That may be another uh, deep dive I'll do is on how not to run a car company. So they've got the car company. Then they've got something called Tata Auto Comp, which is their ancillaries uh, parts divisions, which is they they 
manufacturer parts for other OEMs. So they sell electric motors, battery packs. So I'm sure there must be some sharing of knowledge between Tata Auto Comp and Tata Motors, but they've got, you know, the big main thing, which is a manufacturing piece. So that's one. One is manufacturing hardware. Now let's talk about the second piece, which is the software and the 4G, 5G network. So I've talked to many people that own the Nexon and they all say the software, the app is absolute garbage. And I can say that with conviction because I've seen it. Uh, I would really think that they should just hire TCS and just say, you know what, let's make sure our software is at the level of a Tesla or maybe even a Kia Connect. So that's on the software side. Then with Tata Communications, they could actually create their own private 4G, 5G network. That's the new soup of the month, the flavor of the month. Everybody wants to do their own private 4G, 5G network. And that's something that Tata Communications can do. So that gives them, you know, a little bit more uh, reliability because you would own the entire infrastructure. You would own the quality of service. So when you actually, you know, do something on your app, you know, you've got full uh, capability to the network to connect to your car and you can kind of have that entire end to end platform. So that's on the software stack and the 4G, 5G network connectivity part. Again, these are all Tata companies that are under Tata Suns. So they've got full control. Next is the electricity and charging network. I do not think Tesla or any car company owns a power plant at all. And that is the great thing about Tata, they actually do. So I live here in Bombay, and if you go further south, I think into Norman Point in that area, that power is actually supplied by Tata Power. So they actually generate power. They know how to generate power because they're doing it. So that knowledge with the charging network, right now a lot of Nexon owners can go to a Tata Power Easy Charge and get their cars recharged, or anyone can go actually. I mean, I've gone there a couple times with my Kia. But again, they own the electricity and the charging network again that's under their power. So that's Tata Power and Tata Power Easy Charge. Once again, something that a lot of car companies don't have. Kia doesn't have it. Uh, you know, Mercedes doesn't have it. You know, Maruti will never have it. Uh, maybe Mahindra has some of this, but they don't really have, they definitely don't have what Tata has. And that is this third piece, which is the electricity and charging network. So that is, we talk about EVs. How do you power them? Electricity. Guess who has it? Tata. I'm going to say Tata a lot because they're everywhere. Now, the fourth and final piece to this is a vast real estate portfolio. And that is something that, again, Tata's have a lot ton, uh, have a lot of. So they own uh, the brands of Taj Palace, Vivanta, and Ginger Hotel. So these are all locations where they can put chargers and have people come and charge their cars. Now, I know they are doing it in some capacity, but it's still not as seamless as it should be. Uh, they should also probably combine things like their Tata Easy Power locations with maybe a Starbucks or a West Side and get those portfolio companies to start talking to each other. You know, imagine you have a charging location where you can charge the cars underneath because, you know, it could be raining or it's very sunny. And then on top of it is maybe either a West Side store so people can shop or a Starbucks where people can get coffee. So, and then again, they own the real estate portfolio. If I'm not mistaken, Tata's have a very large real estate portfolio acreage wise. I believe the technical term is shit ton. And that's again, they have a lot of real estate. So that is another one that they could do. So, you know, those four components, if they were to just kind of com combine, they really could be the entire full stack that I talk about. That is automotive company, software and 4G, 5G connectivity, the electricity and the charging network, and a real estate portfolio. It just kind of blows my mind that they have not done something so, you know, full stack from front to end, everything being Tata. I'd love to just see an app that says, hey, welcome, thank you for buying a Nexon. Boom. You're going to be able to charge it at this location. You're going to be able to use Tata Power. You're going to be able to, you know, get the best 4G, 5G service to your car because we've got a pri private 5G network. And all this is done, created by TCS, which is a world-class, you know, provider of technology outsourcing, and they should just bring it in-house. But that's me. So that is kind of this month's deep dive was why in the hell is Tata not doing this? You know what? Hire me. I will get this thing going for you, Tata, because I think you guys just need someone 
a main architect to kind of put all of this together. Of course, now you've seen it, you could probably do it on your own, but I just guarantee you won't have that fit, finesse, and finish because I've seen some of your work and I know that. I know you guys are out there. But anyways, that's it. Anyways, that's the deep dive for this month. Oh man, we're going to wrap up now with our fourth, which is the EV car spotting, the fourth topic. And uh, wow, this is something I just saw three days ago, which is the new BMW iX, sorry, BMW i7. It's got a kind of a long, funky name. Let me just get to it because it's kind of, it's the BMW i7 X Drive 60. My God, those names are so complicated. But anyways, as you can see, it looks really amazing. It's got amazing road presence. Uh, this car clocks in at around 2.1 crore on road. It's got a massive 105.6 kilowatt hour battery pack over 600 kilometer range. Of course, those numbers are complete garbage, but whatever. Uh, 745 newton meters of torque. It does zero to 104.7 seconds. And this has that stupid ass 31.3 inch theater screen. I mean, why you don't want to spend this kind of money and then watch a movie in the back of a car, I can't understand, but I, I'm sure it's a great party trick. I'm sure people show it off, you know, show it off, but I can't see, you know, that thing being used day to day. But who knows, maybe you'd want to watch CNBC as you're heading to the office every day. So here is a view of that same car from the back. As you can see, it looks really good. I mean, when I saw it, I actually was driving and I saw this car behind me. So I actually had to duck into this building and just tell the people, listen, let me just park you for two minutes. Got out of the car and took pictures of this car. And I'm sure that owner must be thinking, what the hell is going on? But hey, anything for content for Electric Avenue. Anyways, that's it. That's another episode. Episode five is done. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Oh, no, we're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. And then